Well, Mom, some of your family and friends thought we should sit down here in Casanova on Dad's 55th birthday, look at some of the family album, and celebrate with you this man who is such a big part of your life. It would take more than even a few days to remember all of your life together and draw out of it all of its lasting meaning for each of us. But if we were to try to, I know that Dad would want us to begin deep in the family history of the Palatinate and Cork County till we found our way to his father and his mother and their marriage and their children and their friends. One of the most beautiful stories I remember of Dad and Andrea is shortly after her death, he was telling about a young intelligent woman he sat next to in a plane who unloaded on him all of the hard times she was having getting along with her mother. He listened patiently and then she thought of asking him, since he was so sympathetic, what about you and your mother? Did you have problems like this too? And he opened his mouth and no word came out. His eyes welled up and he had to excuse himself simply because he simply could not begin to tell her what his mother had meant to him. Concerning his father, before Wells passed away, he gave Dick a box of mementos among them cherished letters and memorabilia of each of his children, and among those, one that Dick had written him from New Hampshire, which included these words. It occurred to me recently, Dad, that I have known you for almost 45 years, and in that time I have never had a negative thought about you, no matter how trivial. I guess that's kind of a way of saying that you have been a perfect father and friend to me, and I shall always love you for this and be grateful to you. His brother Bob, as he thought about Dick, also was brought to his ancestral line and shares with us this beautiful thought. Dick was very much like his grandfather, Chief, my mother's father, Dan Shea. He exuded confidence, but he had a very soft heart. He was gentle with people. He had immense courage and dreamed great dreams. I suppose the people who knew Dick as a young man could not have suspected the refinement and kindness that was within him. You saw it, though, didn't you? The album from then shows happy days, young love, carefree days. And although we came along, Dick, Debbie, Donna, and Mike, neither of you ever really got rid of your youth, as evidenced by this 600 horsepower rear engine dragster, or this 72 ounce steak, or this Honeywell product manager and self-proclaimed leaf child, or these explorers of the Loire Valley. Throughout these years, in many and fine, subtle ways, it was your love and intelligence that let each of us grow up and discover our distinctiveness, including the recipient of your greatest love, Dick. Some more thoughts from friends and family. From Debbie. Several years ago, my sister Donna and I were visiting someone and we got around to talking about my father. And this person asked my sister and I who we felt had the closest relationship with my father. In other words, who was my father's favorite child? And we both looked at each other and said, I think I was. And she said, I think I was. And then I realized, I bet my brothers think they're his favorites, too. And I couldn't think of a better father than that. And this 
from Mike. Every time you sat down in front of people, whether in business meetings or social and family gatherings, moments later, all would have an easy, happy smile, reflecting relaxed yet alert and enthusiastic temperaments. From your nephew, Sean Sweeney, who recalled the two summers he spent at the ages of 15 and 16 working as a log home builder for Dick. That was probably a bit of a nuisance to have around, but Dick always made me feel special. He always had that way. From a friend, Joe Phillips. It was his intelligence, his sincerity, his love of people, his closeness to God, his dreams, and his accomplishments that continuously caused me to look up to Dick Wise. Talking to us from Malaysia, another friend, J.R. His intellectual, spiritual, and moral aspiration is something I've always admired with awe and respect. He's what one may call a perfect gentleman. From Woody Strong in Colorado. He gave so much without asking for anything in return. From a college friend of mine, Kathy Fetzko. He was a gentleman who wouldn't let others feel like a jerk. That's what I remember best about him, his kindness and great sense of humor. From Kevin Cullinane, director of the Academy of the Rockies. Dick's real measure is to be found in the depth of his conviction and in the width of his interests and the breadth of his tolerance. It's to be found in the length of his time-binding dreams and, and his grasp of history and in the tensile strength of his character and the durability of his ideals. From the Given family in Jaffrey, Mary Beth, Steve, and Elmer spend some time recording their thoughts about Dick. Mary Beth, above all, recalled the time spent with Dick and our family in France. The older I got, I began to realize how much this man had given me. I never minded any advice he had to offer. It all seemed to make sense. He was a lot of fun to be around. He was pretty cool. Steve, who got started in the log home business with Dick, had this to say. Uh, he certainly made a lasting impression on all of our lives and uh, I want to thank you for sharing your life with all of us in New Hampshire and we'll, we'll always remember you and certainly do miss you. And their father Elmer had this wish to express to Dick. I always figured that you were searching for something and it continued to draw you around the country and also the world. I don't know what you ever, if you ever found it in life but I hope now, dear friend, that you have actually found it. The years that you and Dad spent living with cancer touched a number of lives across this country. From Jetta, your oncology therapist and new friend, these thoughts. Now I know that in talking about your cancer, that you talked about how, even though it was devastating in many ways, that in other ways, it really provided you some insight and allowed you to bring about an openness and a closeness with your children and your family and friends. And so though on the one hand it's taken your life, on the other hand it's brought you some very precious gifts. I and others who knew you really appreciate and it's made our lives fuller and you've really, both you and Kathy have offered a lot to other people who are living and have lived with cancer. And from Michael Matty, your friend in North Carolina, this lyrical reflection. Dick Wise was a miracle of extravagance. What I saw when I saw him late in his life was looming height, bald head, and a stately, dignified, genteel limp. And he had a monstrous coruscating aura. The card which described Dick's death and announced this celebration included a photograph of him, it's before me now, 
It's a good shot of a smiling avuncular fellow in a tie and sweater and jacket, relaxed, comfortable. It's startling to me because I never knew this man. I never knew Dick when he wasn't dying. And here's the amazing thing, the dangerous thing, the thing that I can't presume to say but will anyway at the risk of romanticizing his illness and his death. The bald, elegant, and suffering man who I knew, who I can still see in the photos in my head, seems more powerful and more beautiful than the smiling, healthy, blue-toned figure on this card. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross has spoken, among other things, of the precise, intuitive knowledge of the ill about their condition and of the growth of their spiritual and emotional aspects as the physical and intellectual decline. I think that's why I prefer the pictures in my mind. They are of a man who knew his mortality, gathering into a greatness of spirit as his body took its leave. Extravagant to the last. Mom, what you've done and the way you've lived has touched all of our hearts. I remember when Dad was dying how clear it was that in a world where everything can seem so relative, the one thing that is unconditional and everywhere the same, no matter what its vessel, because it comes from God, is love. May the future for you and for all of us be one rich with opportunities for learning to love again and again. Change your heart Look around you Change your heart It will astound you And everybody's got to learn sometime Everybody's got to learn sometime Everybody's got to learn sometime Everybody's gotta learn something.